What's up? <laughs> Who is down for a late night past paper session? Uh, I thought I'd just do half of this paper and have fun while I do, while I do it. You know, because I want to enjoy this. Uh, this is a 2021 paper. Pure fun. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd just do it. Off the cuff, we've got a, uh, you know how I like to roll, off the cuff, no no prep. Uh, we've got our mark schedule here, and we've got also the formula sheet. So let's see what kind of questions they want from us. Uh, chill vibes, we're going to be having chill vibes here. Got my vape. Got my good attitude. And I've got my deep love for mathematics. All of that combined together in a big cauldron gives us, I think, a good video here. Let's do it. Question one. Equation of a curve is such that dy by dx. So let's write it out. dy by dx equals to... Immediately, I'm bringing this up. Immediately, because I'm going to have to integrate. So I'm bringing this up, this x4 up. So it becomes a negative exponent. And then plus 32x cubed. And it says that the curve, which defines this differential here, passes through the point. So let's just jot this over here. A half and a four. Find the equation of the curve. Well, this is just integration. So take that over and we say, so I'm just timesing through by dx. 32x cubed and dx. And then we're going to integrate both sides. And so therefore we get y equals, this integrated will give us just y. And this, well, you can just split this up um, like this. So I'll take a few steps here. Don't want to confuse anyone. It's the last thing I want to do is confuse anyone. We're all about clarity here on this channel. Maybe I might chuck some a little subtle things to confuse you. But the maths, no confusion, pure clarity. So you can split this up like this. You can take these constants out. So I'm going to get it down to something really simple. So I'm just taking the 3 out, take the 32 out. Obviously you could have just integrated from here, but you know, I want to, I want to get it super clear. Okay, and this we can do, and this we can do. So what are these? So this is equal to 3 times, well this is go up by a power, divide by the power, plus 32. So this is just integration. Go up by a power will be x4 over 4. And remember, you've got to have this bad boy plus c on the end. Okay, so therefore we get y equals to, well, these will cancel. We'll get minus x to the negative 3 plus the 32 divided by 4 is 8. x4 plus c. Where's my calculator? Got the old calculator here. Okay. I might write that like this. Cool, and I'm gonna write it even nicer. Don't know why. I just don't like. I don't like a negative like this. I don't know why. It just looks. Tell me that doesn't look cleaner than that. Tell me it doesn't look cleaner. It just looks cleaner. It does. You know it does. Okay. So now we have the equation of this curve, but we have this unknown, this plus c. Um, but we have a point, right? So this curve passes through this point. So we can just plug in that point, which is a half four. And we can find c and then we can find the final equation so a half and four gives us four here equals to eight times a half four so you know this is important so put a star there now we're finding c so find c four equals a half to the power of eight times put over one half uh three plus c so let's put all these things in our calculator of 4 times 8 so this so this is 4 equals this is a half put it in your calculator and this is going to be uh, 1 over 2 to the power of 3 1 divided by that gives us 8 so this is minus 8 plus C so we get what a half minus 8 and then we take that over we're going to get 4 so C, this gives us C is equal to 
23 over 2. So therefore, not enough space, but therefore our final equation will be y equals to 8x4 minus 1 over x cubed plus 20, 23 over 2. That's your answer. Should we check it? Let's check it. See if we got it right. See if I'm not trash. No, that's the formula sheet. Okay. Let's get a little zoom action going on here. There we go. Okay, so yep. That's what we got, right? Minus one over x cubed. See, they didn't write it clean like us. See, we're even better than the mark schedule. Let's be real here. At this point. Okay, so yep. Correct. So I'm gonna give myself a big fat tick to make myself feel better about my progress through this exam. Okay, cool. Let's move on. See now, I didn't make myself a drink. I don't have a beer, and I don't even have a hot drink. So I don't know how how it's going to affect me mentally. But you know, we're going to power through because I'm here for the people. Okay, <laughs> what am I even saying? Okay, the sum, the sum of the first. And if I'm being a little quieter, it's because it's really late and I don't really want to wake all my flatmates and stuff. But, and I'm probably being unprofessional, but you know, I want to have fun with these kind of videos. So, anyway, the sum, the sum of the first 20 terms of uh, arithmetic progression is 405, and the sum of the first 40 terms is 1410. Uh, Find the 60th term of this progression. Okay, so we're going to need to go to that formula sheet here. Where is our formula sheet at? So where's those progressions? Yeah, so arithmetic progression is this. So un equals a n minus one d. So let's just write that up there. Un equals a plus n minus one d. So um, we also need that sum. So what's the sum one? Sn equals. So I recommend just writing out the um, you know these equations they they never get you to use this first part but they this is this is the one you want so half n 2a n minus 1d so half n times what was it 2a was it 2 there we go that's the one you got the memory of a goldfish 2a plus n minus 1d 2a plus n minus 1d okay so look we're gonna have to create some equations here and then so First of all, you've got to ask yourself, okay, so find the 60th term in the progression. So we want this, u60. And that is going to be equal to a plus, well, 60 minus 1 is 59d. So if we find a, and if we find d, then we can find the 60th term of this progression. So what have they given us? The sum of the first 20 terms is 405. So s20 equals 405. And they've also given us that the sum of the first 40 terms is equal to 1410. Okay, so we can set up two equations here. Because remember, we're, we're wanting to find A and we're wanting to find D. And so, in order to do that, we're going to need two equations relating those two variables. If we have those two equations, then we can find A and D because we can relate them to each other. So, this is equal to, well, S20, S20 equals to. A half of 20 so I'm just plugging into here half of 20 well, let me write it all out half of 20 of 2a plus 20 minus 1 D which equals 10 times 2a plus 19 D so therefore we get s20 and I know they're not going to give us enough space here and it's gonna piss me off uh, equals 20 uh, 20a plus 19 times 2, brain 38, D. Again, I don't trust numbers, so I'm going to chuck it in my calculator. Yeah, 38. Okay, so, and we know what S20 is, is 405. So 405 equals to 20A plus 38D. So that's an equation relating A and D. And then the second one will be from the S40. So this will equal to a half of 40 times 2a plus 40 minus 1d equals to 
well that'll be 20 and then 2a 40 minus 1 is 39 so 39b so therefore we get s40 equals 2 20 times 2 is 40 a and 20 times 39 you know don't get mad at me okay I'm gonna chuck in my calculator you see look at this look see I'm dumb I'm stupid 10 times I thought it was two times see this is why this is why you don't do it late guys I'm serious my brain isn't working who knows I might not even upload this it's 10 times 20 and 10 times 90 is 190 and the reason I saw that so this is actually kind of important like the reason I saw that like went back there is because okay I was doing 20 times 39 and that wasn't even close to 38 so there was a big disparity in the size of the numbers so that immediately told me okay I've done something wrong okay apologize for that okay I need to concentrate 20 times 2a and 20 times 39 I'm gonna plug those into my calculator it is plus 780 780 okay so that's so therefore 1140 140 no 1410 well this could be a rough one guys man's tired I need to make a coffee or something 1410 equals to 40 a plus 780 B okay so that's our second equation okay so we have two equations with two unknowns so therefore we can find an a and a D from these two equations and then we can find what our u60 term is so if I look at these two equations, if I do equation 2 minus 2 times equation 1, well, we're going to get a 40a minus a 40a, which will get rid of those a's, which means we'll just have an equation with d's. So this is simultaneous equations. So 2 minus 2 times equation 1. This would be 1140 minus 2 times 405. So I'd recommend just put this in. So 2 times 405 is 810. So 1410 minus 810 gives us 600. So 600 equals, we'll get 40 minus 2 times, 40a minus 2 times 20a will give us 0. And then 780d minus, so minus 2 times 190. So 780 minus that is 400. So this equals 400d. So therefore d equals 2. Uh, 600 divided by 400, which is 3 over 2. Okay, so there's our D. And therefore, we can also find our A. So let's say we substitute into 1. We'll get 405 equals to 20A plus 190 times 3 over 2. 190 times 3 over 2. Uh, we have 405 minus answer. So I'm just rearranging this. So this gives us 20a equals 120. So therefore a equals 2, 6. Okay, so now we find our a and our d. Therefore we can say that u60 will equal to a plus 59d, which is 6 plus 59 times 3 over 2. So 6, so 59 times 3 divided by 2 plus 6 is 94.5. So hopefully the answer is 94.5. Made a few mistakes there, so we'll see. Look at that, we got it. 94.5. Boom shaka locker. Okay. So yeah, so you ask, look, this is this produces your starting equation, and then you have to, okay, well, how do I f find what U60 is? Well, I just needed A and D, and then I, I could form two equations relating A and D, and from those two equations, I can find A and D, and then substitute it back in and get, get the answer. You want to sound cool? Talking of sums, this is just a side note, and you do not have to learn this, but the sum of x to n equals infinity, actually no, that's too complicated, this sum 
and I don't know why I'm thinking of this. One, what do you think the sum of one plus two plus three plus four plus five all the way to infinity is? You might think it's infinity. Well, it turns out that that is actually negative one over 12 and they use that in string theory. That sum, how can the sum of positive integers, all of the positive integers equal negative one twelve? How is that possible? Well, it makes sense mathematically, but it doesn't make sense to our brains. Or something weird. That's weird as fuck. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Bit off topic. Find the first three terms in the expansion. Okay, well, this is binomial expansion. So we just look at our binomial expansion. And I'll do half the paper now, and I'll do the other half maybe when I'm most tired. Okay. <clears throat> Binomial expansion formula is this okay? So we do three plus, and I like to write it like that so I know what my a and b's are. So this will be our a and this will be our b. Uh, first three terms, okay? So the first term, if you want to look on the formula sheet, is a to the n. So this would be three to the n, well, which n is five plus. Uh, n1 so this would be uh, 5 1 of well it's going to be 3 to the 4 times minus 2 x to the 1 pretty sure pretty damn sure mm -hmm. and then plus 5 2 3 to the 3 so just, I'm just plugging it into that formula and of course look at my exam hack series I'm hoping that everyone that's even watching this video has gone through my exam hack series hence why I'm not explaining all these things in detail okay and then that'll go on for more but that's the first three terms right so that equals 2 well 3 to the power of 5 3 to the power of 5 is 243 243 and then 5 combination 1 times 3 to the power of 4 and then times negative 2 is minus 810x. And then 5 combination 2 times 3 to the power of 3 uh, times negative 2 squared is 4. So it's going to be plus 1080x squared. I did it, but that is the first three terms, right? Should we check that? <clears throat> 243 minus 810, 1080. Perfect. I mean, that's pretty easy three marks. You just plug it into the formula. Okay, hence find the coefficient of x squared in the expansion of this. Okay, so 4 plus x squared times 3 minus 2x to the 5. Well, this can be rewritten like this. x squared of... Um, times well we've expanded this 243 minus 810x plus 1080x squared 1080x squared plus dot 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 so look you have to think of what what uh, terms will contribute to the x squared coefficient so I'm going to write this again and just a little note here, so 4 plus x squared, this equals to 4 plus x, times 4 plus x, which will equal to 16, plus 4x plus 4x, 8x, plus x squared. So we can rewrite this entire thing like this, so we have uh, x squared plus 8x, plus 16, times 243, minus 810x, plus 1080 x squared plus a bunch more terms but i'm not writing those terms because they're going to be x cubed x4 and we're only interested in coefficients up to x squared for x squared so what things are going to contribute to our x squared term well this multiplied by this will contribute to it so we're going to get an x squared times a 243 plus well this one won't that'll be an x cubed that'll be x4 okay well this one 8x and this negative uh, 810x will contribute to the x squared term. So we get 8x times negative 810x. And then 
that's one and then the last one will be with the 16 times this 1080 so plus the 16 times 1080 x squared okay there's no other thing in here when this is being multiplied out that is going to contribute to that x squared term so you get a 243 x squared plus well, actually this will be minus minus 8 times 8 8 8 10 8 times 8 10 damn that's big 8 4 6 4 a x squared and then 16 times 1080 1080p bro uh, okay, that's a big number. X squared. Okay, so that minus six. So then you just add all that up. Plus two forty three. So I get eleven o four three x squared. So the coefficient of x squared for the expansion of this should be eleven thousand and forty three. Okay, let's have a look. Boom. Okay, so we got that. Cool. Cool. How is everybody feeling? We all good? We all Gucci? Hope we're not feeling stressed. Hope we're feeling calm, zen, prepared, focused, ready to just absolutely demolish this exam to get in there and just maybe maybe I'll give this advice. When you get in the exam, when you get in there, just open up the paper, just have a little laugh, have a little giggle. Just like, is this it? Because, you know, you you would have taken my exam hack series. You would have watched my videos. So you're probably going to start laughing. Let's be real here. You're going to get in there, you're going to have a little giggle. You know, I'll be giggling along with you. Not in the exam room, obviously. I'll be there in spirit. Okay. <laughs> right up. Um, okay, the diagram shows part of a graph. Okay, so I've some 10x, given the b is between 0 and pi, state the values of a, b, and c. Okay, so we're making some transformation from 10x, we're doing some stretching, some shifting, some weird stuff. So let's just look at what tan of x looks like first. Oh man. It's like this. Oh. I haven't even eaten today. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna draw this good. Okay, so that's gonna be like that. So this is something you should know kind of off by heart. This is pi. Uh, this is pi over two. This is negative pi over two. And this will be what? Uh, three pi over four. No, over two, sorry. And then last bit which I don't think will matter this is 3 pi okay so that's kind of what just y equals tan x so we've done things to this with this a b and c here to change this y equals tan x into this so we have to figure out what, what what's happened here so let's have a look where do we start well we've got some shift going so this is the that point. This is this point. So we've shifted it up one. Because, yeah, we've shifted it up one. So C is one. In the Y direction, it's been shifted one. Up one. So C will be one. Um, remember, this is uh, minus B. So that means that it, whatever it is, it's shifting it to the right. And if this is unclear, go watch my functions video and also the trig identical video in the exam set hack series. Okay, so we've shifted it. Uh, what, pi over, hmm. hmm. We shifted this pi over four, right? Hold up. So, this is um, so B will be pi over 4 right because it's been shifted from here to pi over 4 because this should be the origin so B I'm pretty sure will be pi over 4 
and then A is our stretching. So how much are we stretching the amplitude? We can see here, um, so the center is here. Oh, no, 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 no. What am I talking about? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not the shift. Sorry, that's my bad. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is what I'm talking about. I thought the B, if the B was on the X, then that would be the period. But it's not. Okay, sorry. And then A is how much are we stretching in the Y direction? So we're going from, we're going from minus... We're going to, what is this? This pi, pi is here, so this is, oh my god, I'm kind of struggling with this. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, okay, well, look, I mean, we've shifted it up one, that's pretty clear, so that's our C. We've also moved this graph to in the right direction along the x-axis pi plus four so these two are correct and then a which is self stretching will be because this this halfway point here is one I remember that so because this halfway point here is two up we've gone from one to three then our a should be two so we've, we've stretched it two in the y direction because here this halfway point between, you know, the zero and the pi over two, or the pi over four, this halfway point is at one. But between this one, which is fr from the pi over four to the three pi, this is still traveling pi over two, right? Hence our period is the same. Okay, I've got it. So, so from halfway between this here and here is one but now on this graph this is two which means that it's been stretched in the y direction by two so our a equals two our b equals pi over four and our c equals one sorry that took me a while um i mean I'm, let's see if i got it right first a is two b is pi over four and c is one that's what i put right a is two b is pi. yeah okay so this was the shift in the x direction. We shifted it pi over four, and we shifted it up one. So the, the B and the C were easy, but the A was kind of tricky because you kind of had to know that this was at one. That this center point, I hope, I hope that makes sense. Like, this point from here to here is this, is this part. Yeah, the shifted part. And if this was, if A was one, then this would, this middle part would occur. This would go like this, something like that. It would go through here, it would only go up one. So it's gone up two to this middle part of that end bit. I probably took too long in that. So it's been stretched by two. Oh my God, I took too long. This is off, is off the cuff, you know? Okay. My bad, my bad, my bad. Oh, another, Another series win. Oh, I don't really like the series wins, to be honest. Okay, the fifth, sixth, and seventh terms in a geometric progression. Eight is eight k minus twelve and two k. So geometric progression. So we're going to need those different uh, one. So geometric is these. So u n is a to the r n minus one. U n equals a r n minus one. So the fifth, so u5 equals to, u5 equals to 8k, u6 equals to minus 12, and u7 uh, equals to 2k. Given that k is negative, find the sum to infinity. Okay, so this is a similar thing, like we need the starting equation. So the sum to infinity, that is, a over 1 minus r, a over 1 minus r. So in order to find the sum to infinity of this progression, we're going to need the a for this progression and the r for this progression. Okay, so how are we going to find that? Well, first of all, let's find r. And we can find r by dividing these two over each other, two of these over each other. 
if we divide u5 over u6, well then we're going to have this k term which we don't know. Uh, so if we divide u5 over u7, this will get rid of this k term. So u, let's do, yeah, u5 divided by u7. This is going to equal to 8k over 2k which equals to 8 over 2 is 4 and the k's will cancel so this is equal to 4 okay and this also equals to so I'm trying to find r here this also equals to a r to the n minus 1 so r to the n minus 5 minus 1 is 4 over a to the r of n minus 1 is 7 minus 1 which is 6 so this is going to equal to the a's will cancel and this will be what 1 over r squared so therefore we can say that 1 over r squared equals to 4 and therefore r squared equals to uh, 1 over 4 and r equals to um, what uh, the square root of this will, which will be a half right Uh, yep. Okay, so now what? Uh, now we need A. Now that we have R, we can find A. Because we have that, so R, we have R. We have that U6 equals to A to the R5. And our R is equal to... I don't even know why they tell you that. And our r is equal to a half uh, to the power of five. And therefore, our, um, this will be plus or minus. I don't know which one. Okay, whatever. This will be u6 will be is negative 12. So negative 12 equals a to the power of this. The power of five is one over thirty-two. So therefore, our a equals to thirty-two times one over twelve minus three eight four. Hmm. Given that k is negative. Because <coughs> I'm wondering which one to use. Because this is plus or minus because we square rooted it. So because k is negative, like u5, so this means that this is a negative number, which means u5 is negative, u7 is negative. So that means that it's the positive one. Because, because k is negative, and u5, u5 is equal to a of uh, r to the 4. And if r, so we had two options here. If r was minus, then this would give, they would both give the same. Right, they would both give the same, right? So it doesn't matter. Don't worry, don't listen to me. Okay, you can, I guess you can do whatever one you want. Okay. So we have our a, and then we have our, uh, okay, so s to infinity is equal to minus three. I have a feeling that, I have a feeling that it's the negative one, and I'm not sure why, over one minus a half. So what is this? Minus three, eight, four, divided by a half is minus equal to minus seven six eight so the s to infinity is minus seven six six eight i'm a little weary about this one but let's see okay i did get it right i am wondering why they use the positive half 
maybe someone can tell me in the comments. I don't really want to think about it too much. Okay, well, we got it right. Okay, let's do a few more. I don't know how long this has been. Maybe this has been a little sloppy, but I'm trying to be, trying to have a good time here. I'm trying to have a good time, okay? While I do these videos. I'm trying to not, I'm trying to chill people out, you know? Okay, and str kind of struggle through it with you a little bit. Like, I don't want to be perfect here. You know, I could prepare. I could go through the questions and prepare, which what most people would do. But I kind of want to show you that, you know, I mean, I'm getting them all right. I am, but I've never done this before. So I'm struggling through it. So I'm not some like super genius that, you know, doesn't struggle through this too. Like these can be difficult and, you know, I mean, I don't find it too difficult, but I have to think. Like I'm thinking, I was thinking on that tan graph one. I don't really know what was going on for a minute. Anyway. Okay, the equation of the curve is, I'll do a couple more and then finish make a few more lame jokes and then I'll make a part two okay so we've got a curve we got a curve man they love curves <laughs> I love curves uh, should make that into a t-shirt I love curves and the line so this line here y equals 3x minus 4 is tangent to the curve find the value of k okay well we basically just equate them so we equate these two together so this is um discriminant question on the exam hack series it's funny because like there's still this is 2021 it's all still the same it's the same stuff I mean, yeah. so just equate these two we get 2k minus 3 x squared minus k x minus k minus 2 take all the stuff over we have 2k minus 3x squared 3 here so we're gonna get what uh, plus uh, minus k minus 3 uh, take that over so yeah and then we've got what a minus k plus 2 plus 4 will give us 6 so we've got Plus minus k plus six. We'll go like that. Six minus k. Okay, equals zero. Okay, we equated them, and now we have three options because it's tangent. That means that the discriminant of this will equal zero. So the discriminant is b squared minus four ac equals zero. B squared is this. So minus k minus three squared minus four times two k minus three c which is 6 minus k equals 0 and then solve this for k so this is going to give us k squared uh, what will we get plus 6k had to look to the heavens for that one plus 9 and you should possibly be, be taking more steps but you know man's, man's not got time for that 2k times I'm going to do this 2k times minus k is minus 2k squared. Remind me never to do uh, exam papers late. Minus 2k squared, and then we've got minus 3, so plus 3k. And wait, wait, wait. Boom, boom, plus 12k. Focus, Jacob. Plus 3k minus 18 equals zero I mean I haven't got one wrong yet we've had some shaky shaky ones but we haven't got an answer wrong so you know don't be hating I know you hating uh, okay so this is plus 8k squared those two together is 15k this is minus 4 times 15 is minus 60 K and then minus 4 times 18 is minus is plus 72 and this is plus what am I doing okay minus times a minus is a positive why I have no idea but it just is I actually don't know why and neither do you don't lie okay this is 9 K squared so we simplify all the stuff is equal to uh, minus 
minus 54k. So I'm just simplifying, and then 9, and that is plus 81. Equals 0. And hey, I'm seeing divide through by 9 here. We get 54 divided by 9 is 6k, and that is plus 9 equals 0. So we can go k, what? k minus 3 squared equals 0. And give us k minus 3 equals 0, and then we get k equals 3. And you know what I like to say? Boom shakalaka. Wait, we didn't know if we got it right yet. Let's see if we got it right. K equals 3. Okay, so yeah. You equate them and then you see, you know, because there's three options. It can either not be touching, it can be touching, like tangent to it, touching, or repeated root, or two roots, meaning, you know, the line goes through it twice. It says that the line is tangent, so we know that it's one repeated root. This is the discriminant question. Go watch it. It's in my exam hack series. I've already gone through a lot of this. All of this. I've gone through all of this. Okay, I think I'll do one more. We'll do this identity one. And then that's probably half. Seven, that's half. It's maybe over half. Okay, anyway. Probably need to speed up. This is probably going on too long. But tell me what you think. Like, Do you like this kind of laid back? I kind of want this to be uh, a little more enjoyable. You know, because I have my exam hack series. That's the serious stuff. That's where we get into it. That's where we go in. We get serious. Here is like, let's sit back. Let's do an exam together. I want you to be pausing. I want you to be trying these before I do them. Kind of, it's like a collab. I want it to feel more collaborative. I don't want it to be like super serious, like math, you know? That's what the exam hack series are for. This is not. I want to enjoy this shit, man. I want to enjoy math. I want to be the first person on earth to enjoy teaching math <laughs> that's a lie of course there's people out there that love it but okay let's do this one and i'm, I'm good at these i'm nasty at these ones because they have a trig identity question in the p3 one which is a little harder but so um okay and then i get it wrong this is the first one i get wrong okay so we basically need to change this into one minus tan squared Theta. Well, immediately I can see this is cos theta. So this is equal to uh, cos, so 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And it's always important to look at the marks for these ones because there's only two marks, there's not going to be that many steps. So this equals to what? Uh, this is cos squared theta from that identity sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. So therefore cos squared theta equals to 1 minus sine squared theta. So I can change that bottom, the denominator, into cos squared theta. 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. I know this is on the formula sheet. That is equal to, here, 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, or A here. Now, which one am I going to pick? Well, I'm going to pick this one. And I'll tell you why. So this is then equal to cos squared theta minus sine squared theta over cos squared theta. And so that, I just got that 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. I just got, changed that into uh, this. Because that is equivalent to that. So I just got that from the formula sheet. And why did I pick that one? I picked that one because I can see, okay, I've got a 1 and a tan squared theta. Well, I looked a couple steps ahead and I saw that, well, that's going to be the same as saying cos squared theta over cos squared theta. So I'm splitting this fraction up over cos squared theta. And that well, cos squared theta over cos squared theta is 1, and that is tan squared theta. Right, because tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. Okay? So the sine squared theta over cos squared theta is equal to tan squared theta. And that's what we have, and that's what we proved. So that's it. You don't need to look at the answers for that, because we proved it. Okay. Okay. So let's remember this is equal to 1 minus tan squared theta. And again, trig identity video and in the exam hack series. I don't want to keep banging on about it, but look, we've already done all this and predicted that is it's exactly what I said it would be. And it is that. They asked you to do a proof and then they asked you to solve an equation. Okay, so this is equal to one minus tan squared theta equals two tan four theta. And we want to solve this, because you know this is equal to this is the same as this, between zero and one eighty. And the limits are important here. Okay, so let's take all this stuff over. We get 2 tan 4 theta plus tan squared theta minus 1 equals 0. Okay, I'm going to make a substitution. I'm going to make x equal to tan squared theta. 
so, therefore we get 2x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. I did that because, look, I mean, this is something you, you can solve, right? We can use our quadratic formula. Uh, we get what? Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So that's going to be what? 1 squared plus it's going to be the square root of 9, so this is equal to minus 1 plus or minus 3 over 4. So therefore we get two solutions. We get when x equals to minus 1 plus 3 over 4 is a half, or, and, x equals to minus 1 minus 3, which is minus 4 over 4 is a negative 1. Okay, so therefore we have, because x is tan squared theta, this, and tan squared theta equals minus one. Well, this is impossible, right? Tan squared, tan squared theta. You can't square something and get a negative, so this is not possible. Not pos. It's not pos, mate. Okay, and then we get tan theta equals to plus or minus one over the square root of two. So I just square rooted this, both sides. Yeah. One over the square root, but that's the same as saying one over square root two, because square root one is one. Okay, so what we do is we look at, we just quickly sketch it out. We sketch out our tan graph, which we actually already did conveniently. Uh, in that rough question, uh, what was pi over two? This is pi, pi over f uh, three pi, sorry, three pi over two, and this is two pi, but only once from 0 to 180, and it also wants it in degrees, so I should probably write this in degrees. 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. Okay, so let's plug this into our calculator. So we get inverse tan of the positive. Let's look at the positive one. So we're going to get two solutions here. So the positive one is equal to... 1 divided by the square root of 2, shift tan, 35.26, 35.26 degrees. And for the negative one, well, we're just going to get negative that. But you can plug it in, into your calculator if you don't trust, if you don't trust me. But you should trust me. I'm serious. I'm a trustworthy guy. Um, said no trustworthy guy. <laughs> No, I'm trustworthy. You can trust my math at least. So this is going to be the negative one, but I've just chucked it into my calculator because you know I might not even trust myself to be honest. Okay. So that solution, so for the minus one over square root two, that gives us minus thirty-five point blah 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 degrees, two six. And then for the positive one over square root two, that gives us a solution here, which is 35 dot, dot, dot degrees so we've got that one but and we can see the other solution well that's going to be over the 180 because remember we only want it from 0 to 180 and so we're going to we're interested in this other one well this other one will be here and this distance here is 35.26 degrees so this solution here the other solution so we have theta equals 35.26 degrees and we also have um, 180 minus 35.26 which is 144.73 144.73 pretty sure that one it's like two decimal places okay let's look at the answer did we get them all right here we go the moment of truth did we check the k equals 3 I don't know well k was equal to 3 we got that one right Oh, they did it to 2D, 1DP, but we did it to 2. Hey, f fuck it, man. We're more accurate. So 35.3 and 144.7, which is what we got. So they just did it to 1DP. Or maybe you have to do it to 1DP. I don't know. That's something you might need to check. Okay, so we got that right. Okay, that's half the paper. Uh, I don't want to make these videos too long because it could be draining if there's a couple of hours. So we'll just stick with that and I'll do the rest some other time. Make sure you... What you do is you just grab your mouse, right? And you go down. If at any point you found any of this slightly useful, you should go down and just 
tap the like button. Actually, don't tap it. Like I want you to, I want you to smash it. <laughs> and then, if you're feeling super frisky, you can go over and you can you can hit the subscribe button. If you're feeling super frisky, super generous, like you want to get crazy. Anyway, I'll continue on the other one. I hope that was chill. I hope that was all right, uh, not too serious. Like I said, I don't want want these walkthroughs to be too serious. Math is supposed to be enjoyable. So, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video.